Technology. Um, he's going to be giving a presentation this evening on automated SQL performance. So with that, I'll turn the floor over to Ryan. Thanks. All right, who's jazzed? Yeah, Everyone? Um, a little bit about me before we get started. Um, I've been with Pulte for almost 14 years now. Tom and I work together uh, in a DevOps group. Um, I started uh, my career path in the military, much like Tom. I was in the Air Force, uh, was in uh, Japan. I uh, worked on C-130, so it's kind of a drastic change moving from the mechanical side to uh, the computer digital age, right? Um, from there, I, I moved on. I worked for a company, uh, Intuit, Quicken, TurboTax. Everybody's familiar with that, right? Uh, so I worked so, uh, software support there for a while. And then I moved to NCS Pearson, uh, based in, in Mesa. And we basically uh, sold uh, educational software, and I was doing QA there. And then I moved over to Pulte and uh, started off in QA and did some systems analysis, development, Worked a lot with BizTalk, and now we're in configuration management working in a DevOps team. So one of the interesting things that's always been kind of a, a thorn in the side is SQL deployments, right? So uh, that is our topic for tonight. Um, how many familiar with SQL do database deployments? Any DBAs? No? Pseudo DBA developer? Right, right. <laughs> Good deal. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll be talking about SQL. Um, we'll we'll get into some some things. Why why are we talking about automation with SQL and kind of a DBAs kind of like to have their control in that space, right? Uh, some of the required tools from a PowerShell perspective. What kind of components are required for us to actually do automation? Uh, the Visual Studio environment. We all know we generally need. Uh, an IDE to help provide some of those uh, at least testing capabilities, allow us to do some uh, test deployments. Um, setting up our scripts, what kind of components, what does that look like? Uh, basically the, the lay of the land, if you will. Uh, then we'll get into a, a demo and any questions, feel free along the way, just raise your hand or stop me or what have you. So why, why automate the database? Um, we do this for a few few different reasons. Obviously, we want to. There's a big focus on continuous integration into our environments and promoting those through uh, our, our our land. Um, we also want to establish repeatable and consistent processes. What we do to to a QA environment should relatively look like what we do to our production environment. Um, build, deploy, and once at uh, or build once and deploy anywhere. Um, can we take that same package and, and push that through the environments? Also, we want to we want to look at code first, right? Want to make sure that whatever the developers are developing, um, it, it's it's its own package. It can be pushed anywhere. Um, we put a lot of the parameters and, and things inside of the projects that help us with the automation, so we can have those repeatable processes. And quicker delivery, right? Um, a lot of times it's easier to, to automate something, takes less time once you get it down um, and test it. Okay, so some of the required tools, um, obviously we'll, we'll be looking at uh, Visual Studio and the IDE. Um, We'll also look at a little bit about Azure and, and publishing up there. Um, as you can see, there's, there's a link here for uh, the PowerShell SDK for Azure. So you want to use some of those things, especially when we talk about the publishing profiles and being able to automate to Azure. Uh, obviously, you need to do that under some credentials, right? Uh, the profiles themselves allow you that, that ease, so you can just add them to your projects. Um, SQL package. Uh, can be installed with Visual Studio um, as, as an optional component, uh, SQL Server, as well as SQL Server data tools. Um, here's, a, here's a link as well to some of those. Um, I believe this is to the actual SQL publishing uh, packager. And then the registration of, of some PowerShell modules. Um, 
this is mostly done, uh, especially for those who have multiple versions of Visual Studio and things of that nature. You, you generally want to have some type of modules and, and snap-ins provided to allow you to do those things uh, when we're talking about automating. All right, any questions so far? All right. So I'm going to bounce around here just a little bit. Uh, but basically, a couple of things we want to go over is the actual database project itself in Visual Studio. Uh, we'll talk about versioning, um, the schema comparison itself, uh, the publishing profile, any post deployment scripts you might want to attach to your package, uh, and MS build. Um, will allow us to further automate those those packages and create the extract or the the DAC pack. Have anybody has anybody worked with DAC pack before? So DAC pack is basically the equivalent to uh, a binary when you compile a, a .NET application, right? It's it's basically the the map or the schema for you to to deploy to your target environment. So with that, um, let's bounce over to Visual Studio. Okay. All right, so uh, back to Visual Studio. Um, basic database project. Um, what you can also do is if you don't have a, a sample uh, database project, you can actually do the, the reverse engineer of a database from a specific environment, right? Has anybody done that before? No? Uh, it's done with, with the schema comparison. Basically, what you can do is you can create an empty database project in Visual Studio, and then you can do a schema comparison from your uh, target environment to the actual project, and it'll populate all the objects from the database. Views, triggers, tables, the, uh, the permissions, although permissions are kind of a no-no in it, database project, especially when you have multiple environments, because those are going to vary across different environments, right? Um, so this is the, the actual project in Visual Studio. I've got a couple of tables defined, a um, couple of views. Um, so, so the biggest things to notice about the database project are going to be what target platform um, we have set up here. So for this one, it's a SQL Server. 2014 database. Um, you want to make sure that that's properly set. Um, you also want to make sure one of, one of the best practices for, for doing database deployments is to use a specific publishing profile. Now this profile will allow you to do different things when you, when you talk to that database. You can say, hey I don't want to drop any triggers, I don't want to drop any tables. Um, so you can, you can control those specific types of things that occur to your database when you do that publishing. Um, the IDE Visual Studio allows you to do the publishing uh, direct to the database from the database project. So if we were to come in here, right click, we could publish to our target environment specifying database name uh, and things like that. So, but we won't we won't get into that here for the sake of uh, sake of time here. Uh, another important aspect is if you're going to be doing any post deployment type items to your environment. Maybe you want to, maybe you have a PowerShell script that writes out data, right? You want to update rows, so you can include a post deployment script that gets bundled with this DAC pack. As you can see here you can specify the name of your DAC pack file specifically. So that's, that's basically the project itself. Now if we were to go and actually run the build for this database project, we can see build, build succeeded down here. And then we can go to the specific output, bin, debug, and then we have our nice little package, packaged application here. Now if we were to take a look at this, it would basically show us all the tables and views and everything associated with that. 
So, uh, moving on to the, the more fun stuff. Um, let me go back to our presentation. Can everybody hear Larry okay? Let's step right here and see if I can hear everybody here. We're good? I think so. You might speak up just a little bit. We should be recording, yes. Yeah, I'll do my best. Yeah, I'll totally yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. We'll have to see if we can't post these slides. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, I can give you all the, even the database stuff if you want. All right. Um, so we, we talked about some of the, the specific things um, in the, the database project itself. Um, the versioning. The, the build output, the publishing profile. Um, now we'll go and we'll actually take a look at the anatomy of the PowerShell itself. Um, obviously we wanna set up the environment um, or PowerShell scripts using some variables and file pathing and, and things of that nature. Uh, we'll also take a look at another feature called deploy report. Um, this allows us to basically create an XML output prior to committing those changes to the database. Um, we'll also run through the SQL publish and we'll, I'll show you how to kind of control that script. There might be a condition where you want to um, not drop any of the users in the database. So we might write a little you know, script that'll say, you know, remove these specific lines from, from the power or the, the SQL extract. Um, then, we'll, then we'll do some demos for uh, both, both an on-premise instance of SQL and Azure itself. So, um, if we open up PowerShell, I've got, uh, got a script here and we'll just kind of walk through that and see if you guys have any questions. So, one of the things we want to do in our uh, script is is run MS build. We want to compile that application before we deliver it anywhere. Make sure it's it's completely compiled and we have output. So what I've done is I've set a MS build path going to MS build.exe, which is basically the compiler for our database. Um, or it can be used obviously for, for .NET apps, um, a lot of different types of applications. The project path uh, which is going to basically go to that directory for the code behind specific for the database project in Visual Studio. Um, we're also pointing to the actual DAC pack itself. So there's going to be output from the build and we want to we want to have that name of the DAC pack available for us to use. The next line, the SQL package, um, basically is the tool that does most of the work. It's gonna allow us to do that publishing. It's gonna allow us to do specific things to our target SQL environment. Um, also, you see I've set up the name of a, the application. We've just called it sales DB in this case. And the environment is test, right? Um, local, local instance of SQL running on this box at this point. So um, we give it the database server, the actual SQL server database name, the profile path. This is, this is where I told you we can control what we want to do with that, the actual implementation of the SQL, right? Don't drop any of the specific database triggers or anything like that. Um, and then uh, if we were to use some type of permissions uh, or other types of permissions we want to apply to the database, we can we can use that as well. So that was the last statement there uh, for the permission path. Um, so as we look at our script, the first thing I'm going to do is compile the application and provide output, and that's done with MS build. So I'm specifying our typical command um, in PowerShell to run the executable. Uh, for MS build and give it the path and the project file that's used um, for the database. Um, looking further down here, we've, um, we're, we're creating some output paths. So I want to be able to 
really look at or inspect, when I step through this PowerShell, I want to be able to inspect those specific things that occur. So what I've done is I've created a couple of target release paths. I've also basically created folders based on date variables. Um, they've got a couple of commands here to basically run our diff report and then do the SQL publishing. So if we look at our diff report, um, where are we? what we're doing here is we're basically running the SQL package application and we're passing it specific command variables for uh, the, the type of action required to create that report. So the action of de deploy report basically will do that comparison against your target environment and your project and spit out output saying these are all the things that are going to happen to your database. So it's, it's really a good way of understanding what objects got touched in your database. Uh, and then we, we give it the, the database server, the SQL database name itself, the, to the, the DAC pack. We use the DAC pack to actually do the, the comparison and then we spit out some output results. So if I were to run this and I'll just make sure we don't do our report here. I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to drop this view. completely out of the database. So if I choose execute and our project is up to date, we should see that this specific view is going to be in our, our result set. Um, so I'm just going to set a breakpoint here so we can step through. So setting up a couple of variables, testing our, our local path to see if it exists, and then creating new files. And then I actually get into the diff report. Oops, I guess that didn't, didn't work out as planned. Let me run that one more time. Okay, so now we get into the actual execution of that. And then we can see we've got some, some basic output from the actual comparison. And if I were to go to my database project, Oops, where do we go? TFS, sales DB. So this is the diff report that is spit out. Um, this is the XML output from the actual creation of this object. So gives you gives you a good idea of what's going to happen to your database. We saw that, you know, we dropped that specific view out. Then when we do the comparison against the DAC pack itself, this is what we get for the report specific action running against SQL package. So if we were to take that one step further and actually do 
the publishing, what, what we've done here is, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little leery when it comes to pushing stuff to my database. So I want to have a little bit more control about what gets put in there. So one of the things you can do is you, instead of direct publishing to the database, you can create a SQL file or an output of all that SQL that's going to be applied, right? And take a look at it before it actually happens. Um, so one of the things you do is, is you create the file and then you can you kind of go through it, find out what it's going to do, and then really start looking at, you know, maybe I want to remove some of these lines of code um, and the actual package. Um, if, if we look through here, what I've done is basically after I create this specific file output, uh, or at least give it a, a, a command to actually create the file, which is called script, action of script. We can, we can actually start a process, spit all that data out uh, to file, and then we can go through each one of those lines to say, okay, I don't want to see these things in here, so I'm going to replace these lines with nothing, basically. Um, I, in this example, I don't want to drop any users in the database. I don't want to drop any of the roles or the schemas. Um, if I see these specific types of commands, uh, I'll go ahead and replace it with these types of uh, al alternative commands. So gives you a little bit more flexibility with what you, what you intend to do to that database. Uh, I, I know this has kind of been a, a real stickler for DBAs. Um, so they've kind of mandated that these are the types of things that we don't want to happen. And you, have, you also have the ability to control some of these things further up in the stream by using that specific publishing profile. So if we were to go and, and run this, um, I will set a breakpoint right before we actually do the invocation to SQL so we can take a look at what that looks like. So before we do that, we'll just go back and make sure that that view is no longer in the database. And it's not. I hope this works. It worked earlier. We won't get struck by the demo guy. <laughs> uh, I think we're all set. So I'll get rid of this. And we will just run it. All right, so I hit my function for running the SQL publisher. We'll step through. Um, here's my command arguments that I'm going to be passing later on. Write out those arguments. Oh, I, everybody likes to see that stuff, right? Um, so we'll start the uh, process here. And wait. Okay, now um, we're getting content of that SQL file. So I should be able to go out to the location. And where are we? This is the actual file it created. Oh, and it's going to open it up in SQL, so just a second. I don't care about that right now. This is what it's detecting. So it's, it's compared the actual database DACPAC file, which was compiled with MS build to the target um, database. So 
as you can see here, the only thing really in here is the creation of a view, um, which is the view we dropped earlier. And if we come back, if we go through the rest of these, it, it would basically take out um, anything specific um, that was in there, which there isn't at, at this point, but we can, we can drop those users if we need to. So let me just, and then, now this is where we do the invocation of SQL. Um, has everybody, anybody used the invoke uh, SQL command? Tom, all right. <laughs> Times two. Um, so it takes, takes input file, which is the file we just created, um, your database, and your server instance, you can set some verbosity here. And in this case, I just said error action, you know, uh, stop in case there is an issue. So if we continue on, uh, this one is, would be actually if we wanted to apply any other things. Um, in this case, what we were using this for is to apply specific permissions to a database. So it'd run another type of script if we needed it to. But since since the variable is null, it should pass right over that. If you run that, you stop doing rollback when it's already accomplished. Um there are some things in SQL package that allow you to get to that state and generally it's a backup and restore. It's probably better to have the backup. Right. There, there are some things you can you can do in the in the publishing profile that you can specify back up that database before. Um, but there's no true transaction processing where right, right. I mean, in some of the cases we have, we just go back to a prior version of code in Visual Studio or Team Foundation Server, and and just do a build from that point and apply those changes. Now, if it was something really drastic, maybe we're changing the whole schema of, of tables and moving data around. Obviously, hey, I better back it up, right? Yeah, full backup. Um, so this actual invocation to SQL should have created a new view. And if we refresh here, we have three now. So we've got that fourth one. So it's applied the changes that uh, that we have. So that's uh, that's invoking um, using SQL. Um, we can take a look at Is your view there this now? package. Yeah. Yep. So I forget which one of them was. Which one was it? Customers. Yeah. Good eye. Um, so if we take a look at, it's there, um, obviously it does a select from customers, so it returns a whole bunch of data. Not, not probably the ideal view, but, um, a view in itself. Um, if we were to take a look at SQL package itself. There's a, there's a whole bunch of things you can accomplish with it. The, the major actions associated with SQL package are gonna be the extract, which allows you to create a database snapshot. So that might be something you might wanna uh, take a look at. Um, the publish, which is basically what we were doing with the invoke SQL. Um, exporting the database and this, you can actually create a, a backpack, which is basically your backup. Um, the import deploy report, we touched on that, which creates the XML uh, based on the specific uh, between the DAC pack and the target server or the target database. Um, you can also do one of these things called the drift report. It really requires you to version your databases though um, and that's something that I haven't really taken a look into that much. Um, it didn't really fit the model because we weren't applying that extra information to SQL this, 
to actually version everything that we do when we when we touch our environments other than you know the versioning aspect of your code in Visual Studio um, and then create the script we, we just did that here we created the output um, which al allowed us to further manipulate that file and then apply it to our target environment um, so this goes through um, obviously a bunch of switches that you can pass um, you can pass specific um, connection strings um, including usernames, passwords, things of that nature. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here that's uh, of major <coughs> value. Yeah, I, I mean, SQL package is, is pretty, it's a pretty good application to um, interact with your, your SQL systems. Okay, um, so any questions about SQL itself or the PowerShell script? This, these are all things we can provide after if you guys want to take a look. I'm not a PowerShell developer, unlike my, my friend here. Um, I've kind of come up through the ranks and used it when I needed it. Um, in this case, we needed something to do that because we've never actually automated database deployments before. So um, this, we pioneered with, with a couple of apps and kind of rolled it out through our environments. Now we ha do have some other environments where we said, no way, we're not doing any automation to these because we've got replication to other databases. We've got, you know, um, mirroring of databases. So you really want to really understand uh, what that automation looks like. And generally, it requires you having a lot of elevated privileges to interact with schemas, especially if they're bound to replication and publishing and articles and all that good stuff. Um, so this model might not fit that to where you still want to be a little leery about what you actually apply using automation. Um, so, it, just take a lot more work. yeah, yeah. And they, sometimes you're biting off uh, a huge Elephant, is it? Is, it, is that what you say? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, pretty basic PowerShell itself. Um, there isn't a lot of magic in here. Uh, the The biggest thing is to really understand what we're what we're deploying when we use the database project, um, and having a little bit more control around that. Um, we've indicated by really going through and, and searching for those things that we know could end up biting us later, especially around permissions and things of that nature. Um, Azure, I've, I've, I've done this down even more to support Azure because I know what I deliver to Azure is truth in my database project. Generally, when we, when we set up an Azure uh, database instance, it's, it's very vanilla. There isn't there isn't a lot of control, especially with the V12 version of SQL. Um, there isn't that additional overhead. There really isn't the, the concept of the old SA, right, in the environments. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more granular, specific to your database, and you don't have to worry about a whole lot of things. Um, in this case, uh, for Azure, what I've done is I didn't even care what was, what was being outputted. Whatever was in source control is what I want there in the cloud. Um, so we set it up a, a little bit differently with my database server. You know, whenever you create a, an instance in SQL, uh, in, in the cloud rather, um, you generally have to open it up because uh, it's, it's bound by firewall rules, right? So um, I've got a small implementation here of of SQL after it loads here that I've, I've basically said um, I'm gonna allow basically any any IP range to, to connect there so that that was one of the nuances here other than that it's a very simple implementation uh, right-click functionality create my database right and then what you can do is use your your database project from Visual Studio and push that up to the cloud. 
Um, so, let's see. I think it's under networking. That's my database. So here's here's my SQL server in Azure. And then I can set up specific things for firewall. In this case, like I said, I've, I've opened it up 0 to 255, 255, 255, 255. Um, you can also do specific things with Active Directory. That's kind of a, a new feature. Um, and then, obviously, you can, you can create the automation script from your SQL database. Now, if I wanted to do a, a ground-up implementation from, from bare metal, I could do that, right, using some of the JSON here um, and then using some of the Azure PowerShell modules. Um, I'm not sure if you have any, have, have you had that in a prior session, some of that stuff? That's what he's going to cover. Next, next week or That's next month? He's going to cover this very topic that you see here, which is all these JSON templates. I mean, almost everything in Azure you can build with a JSON template. They started out in GitHub and now they've moved them all in, inside the portal. So some pretty pretty cool stuff there from an automation perspective. Going back to the PowerShell, um, like I mentioned before, basically every, everything is going to be the same except for where we're pointing to. Um, I need to make sure that I have access. So what I've done is I've obviously I've created a user and a password specific in Azure so I can interact with that. Um, here as seen on screen, right? Um, and we're doing the same kinds of things. We're going to run uh, a diff report to see what, what's up there um, and, and give us output of, of that in the XML format. And then we're going to run um, the SQL publish again. Now, as you can see before, in my previous local on-premise version, I had a bunch of stuff that I was doing, right? This was this was an action type of script. Publish it out as a script, manipulate it, and then do the invocation using the SQL command. With Azure, I've just said, just publish it, right? That, so we've got a new action type here of publish using the same type of parameters, really. Um, passing in the variables for username and password and server and database, right? I'm not even gonna bother um, at this point running the diff report because we've seen that example. Um, and I'm going to actually go into this. Let's see if I, I'm still connected. So um, in 2016, you can use um, SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio to uh, manage and, and view your databases in Azure. Um, you can also use Active Directory. The, one of the new things for 2016 was the, the, the ability to authenticate using Active Directory credentials to, uh, to Azure. So, Azure AD, yes, yep. Yeah, and that's, that's where we were taking a look um, you can actually come back here, and you can set up your Active Directory admin here. Uh, so I could I could put in my credentials here and use use the ad the AD uh, authentication on on my local system to get up there. Um, so same same database really. Um, we'll go and this time we will drop all of these. I'm hoping it'll connect.
I think so. Hey, all right. So I'm going to go drop these views. Um, We'll just drop two of them for now. So if we refresh, those views are now gone. And we'll come back to our PowerShell. And then we'll just walk through. And this gives us a little bit of output. Um, I believe you, there's there's a little bit more extensible output you can get um, when you when you call SQL using SQL package rather. Um, so in this case, it spit out some information for us, tells us it's creating those views, and if I come back to SQL, refresh, now we have the views. So makes makes Azure implementations very uh, easy. Um, a lot of the challenges that we have today is we didn't want to give all of our DBAs access to Azure because it's still very new to us. And uh, our DBA teams are, are really focused in that, that space. And there's, there's a lot of space outside, right, that you have control to Azure as far as being able to manipulate specific things at the subscription level, at your asset level, at the, all the resource groups, all that good stuff, right? So uh, we kind of paved the way uh, in the automation space as far as being able to do these specific types of things. Now, obviously, there's a lot of collaboration that goes on with your development teams and, and uh, you know, your DevOps teams and things of that nature. Uh, even, even with the DBAs themselves, you know, they, they want to understand those things as well. So um, it's, it's been a, a very good learning opportunity for us to, to try to play with these specific tools and how they, you know, can manipulate our environments and, and whatnot. So um, let me see, going back to uh, our presentation here. I don't Um, so we did. We talked about a, a little bit of the anatomy of, of the PowerShell. Um, again, w was there any specific questions around the PowerShell? Is this something you guys think you might go out and do? Would, would there be, a, you know, kind of a probably a learning curve using the SQL package tool itself, right? Um, how you actually can. Uh, use those specific switches and, and do have that little bit of control. What do you think, Tom? Do you think there's anything else you want to cover from a PowerShell perspective here? I don't know. Welcome to those guys that showed up. Who showed up, so. Um, the only thing I could say is in addition to what he's talking about, there's also a good community movement that's going on around uh, SQL databases it's called DBA Tools. I have not had the opportunity to go look at them to see what they do. I know what this tool does because of the work that uh, Larry's done. Um, so I would encourage you to take a peek at that too um, if, if you're a DBA sort of person. I'm not really. <laughs> I'd rather write PowerShell all day. <laughs> right. Yeah. DBA tools, DBA. There's a project called DBA Tools. No, it's a it's a community project. Okay. So it's it's out on GitHub, I think. There's a guy by the name of SQL DBA with beard, who's from. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet him in. Uh, <laughs> what? Singapore. Singapore. Yeah. What? I was trying to say, why don't you show GitHub? <laughs> oh, GitHub. Okay. Oh. Do you want to go to GitHub? Sure. All right. Let's see if I can get there. Um, 
and then if anybody wants these scripts, we can make them available via some means. And the, I'm really terrible about doing um, after meeting updates. Really, I am. I, I must admit, trying to get it all set up, I'm really good at, but the follow up afterwards, I'm not so good about it. So if you really want them, please reach out to me, tweet me, email me something, which will force me to do it. And just here's some DBA tools. I don't See? remember which one it is. One of these here? I don't remember. I'd have to go look up his. Uh, I'd have to go look on Twitter. I can't remember. Yeah, that that lady right there is the MV, uh, PowerShell MVP. I recognize her picture. She's uh, Christy Lamera. She's out of uh, I think the Netherlands. She's pretty good stuff too. Just oh, like wow. there he is. Yeah. Good library of stuff here. So, is that? Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, Tom and I, like like you mentioned earlier, uh, we've been working on some of the uh, the automation perspective from uh, Team Foundation Server 2015. We've got our own custom tasks built based around some of the things you saw in this PowerShell script, right? We've created a task itself that we can point whatever connection strings we want and build a database project right and use that output to really deploy to any environment we have we have this actually supporting our production environments at this point so it, it's been a, a really useful tool in, in helping the, the automation front well the, the other really nice thing about a DAC pack just to echo what you said is let's say that you deploy something to production and you want to remember what the heck you deploy. Well, the whole the whole shoot match is in that backpack. So it's like a saved off copy of everything that was in your project from that date. So that, that you can use for compare to anyway. Right? Right. So it's, it's really it's really pretty cool. Great ideas. And if you actually change it to dacpack.zip, it just goes into its regular zip file. Yep. It's just like a nugget package. String might be a little long to get to the underlying objects, but it's there. Trust us. Um, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff out here, right? Uh, there's, you can do SSRS stuff. You can do SSIS stuff. Um, you know, there's there's a ton of help out there on on using SQL package itself. Um, some some of these concepts were based upon, you know, forums and things that we we found out on the internet. And GitHub has been a a really good tool for, for finding some of these things as well. Okay, any questions? Are there things like just to be able to look at from an administration standpoint, I'm a DBA, right? So I don't do as much of the performance, but I am interested to be able to say, go out and look at all my servers and look for long ones and those kind of things. Yeah. Well, there, there is, uh, um, I haven't uh, messed with the SQL PowerShell provider as much. But you can actually, when you install uh, SQL Management Studio or you install that, if you pick the PowerShell option, it will also install the PowerShell objects and whatnot. And then you can go to your command prompt and uh, log in to a SQL server and then pretty much execute almost everything that you have in the SQL Management Studio. So that you could, you could actually script some of those things you're looking for. Like, for instance, I scripted... Uh, Backups using that. So there are things you could do. You would just have to know what you're looking for. I would not profess to be able to know all that kind of stuff. I'd have to sit down and get the requirements and then figure it out. Well, no, I think it's anything from 2012 up, I think. Yeah, 2012 up using SQL authentication to Azure. Um, with 2016 was the first real one using Active Directory that will allow you to integrate to or, you know, talk to that Azure instance. Did that, did that answer your question? Have you so, played it all with the provider for SQL? You should. It's pretty cool. Providers are cool. One of my favorite things in language. So if you have a library of T-SQL that you've built out, you can absolutely apply, you know, run those things against the database using this process result set back and do something based on that, right? Maybe you want to send an email out or have this run as a, as a job, right? 
um, run your T-SQL, spit out output, email. Some of those like critical events where I can over those emails. Yeah, I'm sure you could. Yeah. Sure you could. Absolutely. Yep. Definitely. Um, that's that's about all I had unless uh, we have further questions. Um, so we've gone over basically the the DAC use the use of the DAC pack in an automation perspective. Um, we've done the deploy reports, the SQL publishing. Um, we set up our tools right with with instance paths and whatnot. Um, I think that's it. Thanks, Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it.